Okay, we're thanks. just going to move on. Um, two more talks. Uh, Roya. Roja. I'm not sure. Roja, Roman. Roja, okay. Yeah, okay, thank you. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, first of all, uh, thanks for the organizers for giving me this opportunity to present my work. Uh, I am Rosa Rahman, presently working at Satya Bhama Institute of Science and Technology, Chennai, India. Yeah, uh, about my talk, uh, you can see in the background something is burning out. Yeah, my talk is about that, the assessment of the intense forest fire over a a popular hill station in the southern India. Uh, the analysis using uh, ground-based and space-based ladders. So uh, this has been the historic fire event uh, that has happened over this location. And this was also reported by uh, the NASA newsletter as well. Uh, this about this particular site, there are two important uh, things. Uh, why this is so popular and why the people attention is uh, uh, over this site and during this event. So the first thing is that this is the world's uh, most popular pilgrimage uh, and uh, the settlement means uh, the uh, permanent residents over this location are only less than 100, but uh, every day about 150,000 people visit this place. This is elevated at one kilometer, about thousand meters elevated. And uh, the second important thing is uh, the dense forest around this uh, hill station consists of uh, plenty of uh, red sandal wood. That is the most expensive red sandal wood. So that is the reason why people are uh, very much interested to study over this location. And uh, they were very much uh, concentrated on this study when uh, some fire fire happens. And the second thing is uh, why this event is so historic because every year during March, April, May, the fire happens. But uh, this particular event is so historic in the recent decades. Why? Because the frequent, uh, the every year fire happens once or uh, once in a while or uh, one or two days, it will be stopped. But this particular event happened almost like uh, two weeks and this was very much intense. And this has burnt out about 1,500 1, hectares of uh, forest land and many habitants were uh, uh, destroyed. So this is about this uh, particular location and our LIDAR site was uh, uh, just about 2.5 kilometer aerial distance downhill. Our university campus was uh, located downhill and uh, the fire happened at the uphill one kilometer, okay? Yeah, this is the LIDAR we have operated. Uh, actually, this has been the routine operation, daily operation we have been operating and uh, fortunately we were able to capture this particular event. And this is the micropulse LIDAR and I'm not going to the technical details of this because of uh, lack of time. So, yeah. During this particular fire event, uh, these are the uh, nice pictures we were able to observe. Uh, the first picture, the first one, this one is, uh, you can see at about three kilometers, there was a plume of uh, fire smoke. And below two kilometers, that was usual uh, uh, long range transport aerosol as well as the urban aerosol. And uh, when it was the intense fire, sorry, somebody is interrupting. Should I proceed? Okay. Keep going. Uh, sorry, everybody else mute. Uh, can uh, everybody please mute except the speaker? Can you just uh, mute them? Many people are talking, sorry. Okay, thank you. Yeah, the second one is the uh, dense fire smoke spread up to 3.5 kilometers when uh, the event was very intense. So yeah, this was the tailored image of uh, total events from March 14 to 28. As you can see, the fire event just started here and uh, this was uh, very intense about 22, 23 and uh, uh, in fact, uh, this was the first event 
where uh, Indian Air Force was uh, deployed to stop this fire using uh, aircraft, uh, sorry, choppers. So that much intense uh, fire was this one. And uh, to come from, yeah, here we can see there were multiple uh, layers of uh, uh, aerosol and smoke as well. So to confirm how far it has been spread, uh, uh, there has, uh, we were happened to have only one Calypso overpass during this event that is on uh, 25th March. So from this image, this green light, uh, the green line is the exact location of the fire event. And as you can see from the aerosol subtype, uh, the smoke was started from here and it has spread for several hundred kilometers. So, and uh, from this uh, dispersion, uh, uh, high speed dispersion also, uh, we confirmed that this smoke, particular smoke has uh, spread for uh, about more than 100 kilometer radius. And uh, from the in-situ observations, there were there is a National Atmospheric Re uh, Research Laboratory, maybe most of the people know Indian MST radar. That location, we have uh, in-situ observations. That location is about 50 kilometer away from this fire, fire spot. And from there and other university location also, we were able to uh, observe enhancement of uh, black carbon and uh, total aerosol extinction and uh, AOD during this event. That means that the effect of this fire has uh, widespread uh, effect. Yeah, coming to the summary. So the multiple layers of uh, uh, backscatter absorbed in our LIDAR might be the major reason is from the fire smoke and that might be mixed up with the long range transport because the season is uh, popular for long range transport biomass burning aerosols. And so the LIDAR signals are mix up of both fire, fire smoke as well as the long range transport smoke. And because of this, uh, the atmospheric boundary layer has uh, increased up to 3.5 kilometer. This has been uh, identified using the nearby radio sounder uh, observations at NRL. And uh, the in-situ observations, as I already mentioned, the in-situ observations were also showing drastic enhancement during this event. Yeah, this was about my talk and thank you very much. <laughs> okay, uh, thanks, thanks very much, uh, Roja. It's open for uh, any questions. And Nicolette. Yeah, you can unmute. Uh, Nicoletta, you can unmute. Okay, no? Can you yep. hear me? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, I uh, want to ask is about slide. Um, I think one, two, three, four. The fifth uh, slide, if you can go there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can you uh, make some assumption on the uh, composition of, you said they are aerosols here? Uh, yeah. Because they are uh, arranged uh, uh, on the vertical uh, disposition. Yeah. Did you make the assignment of uh, the composition of these layers? Uh, no, because uh, we have only single channel LIDAR. So from okay. this, I think, yeah, we cannot uh, differentiate the type. Uh, yeah. And this one in, in the uh, right part, uh, can you uh, assign this type of, uh, uh, oh, I don't know, spots, the reddish spots, what they mean? Do you know what they mean? Uh, because mean, it's spectacular, the image is spectacular, but uh, can you do some assignments inside? Yeah, you mean the, about 15 kilometer? I don't know, it's written yeah. Calypso. Uh, yeah. yeah, in the Calypso, the top layer you are talking about, the red spots. Yes. Yeah, that is the cirrus cloud. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> nice, okay, thank okay. you. Uh, yeah. Joe? Yeah, hi. Uh, yeah. I assume your micropulse LIDAR is, is transmitting both 532 and 1064, is that correct? Which one? Uh, you mean our LIDAR? Yeah, your MPL. No, no, MPL is only 532. Okay, so yeah. when you 
when you have a plot of the backscattering ratio, yeah, that's not the wavelength ratio. Then that's the ratio of what to what. Ah, uh, yeah, we assume the lidar ratio uh, uh, forty. So we just assume uh, uh, the fixed lidar ratio, not the derived lidar ratio. Yeah. <clears throat> Understood, thanks. Yeah. Okay, no more questions. Th thanks again, uh, uh, Roja. Very nice Thank talk. You.